If you want to deal an absolute ton of damage with necromancy, you've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to go over everything you need to know to be able to absolutely cook any boss in the game with necromancy. We're going to start things off by going over things like auras, invention perks, archaeology relics, and then we're going to get into the basics of necromancy, how to best gain and spend all your stacks, what to do with all of your conjurers, and then after that, we'll take things a little more advanced. With that said, sit back, relax, and I hope you all enjoy. The best aura for learning how to deal damage with necromancy is the Supreme Invigorate Aura. This is going to save you 10% adrenaline every time you use an ultimate ability, which is going to happen a lot, especially when we get in to the more advanced rotations. Using the Supreme Invigorating Aura, as well as the Conservation of Energy Relic, will make your rotations a little bit easier and will give you a lot more leniency on anything that requires timing. That being said, if you don't have or don't want to use Supreme Invigorating, Dark Magic and Majorat are also both good options. Before we get into specific rotations, let's do a very quick overview of archaeology relics, perks, and all that nonsense just to get out of the way early. The perks that I'm currently using are on my main hand, I've got Precise 6 Ruthless 1, and on my off hand, I've got Aftershock 4 Equilibrium 2. On my top, I've got Invigorating 4 Mobile, Devoted 4, and Impatient 4, and then on my bottoms, I've got Relentless 5 Crackling 4, as well as Biting 4, Crystal Shield 1. I've linked the Wikipedia perking guide in the description down below, and it's super easy to navigate. All you gotta do is click on the link, and then decide if you're on a budget or you want the best possible perks. From there, they'll have a link for every single combination and exactly how to get each one. Next up, let's talk about Archaeology Relics. If you have access to Conservation of Energy, this is by far the best Archaeology Relic for the Necromancy combat style. Outside of Conservation of Energy, Fury of the Small is also extremely good. Outside of that, your other options are completely up to you. Let's say you're someone that doesn't have Conservation of Energy and you only have 400 Relic Power. Well, with that setup, I would recommend going with Berserker's Fury as well as Fury of the Small. One other thing that I have active is the passive Ring of Vigor. This is unlockable by completing the Extinction Quest and it's going to save you an extra 10% Adrenaline on every single ultimate ability you use. If you don't have this unlocked, it's not the end of the world, but this thing is strongly recommended. It doesn't take that long to get and it is extremely powerful. We're going to start this video off by using some basic pointers that can get you to around 300,000 damage per minute without having to use a Zuck Cape or any ultimate abilities for that matter, simply by gaining and spending our stacks appropriately. But once we've covered all the basics, I'm going to be throwing on the Zuck Cape and the DPS gear, and we're going to be pushing our damage output all the way up to above 700,000 damage per minute. But one thing at a time, let's get into the basics. Before the basics, a quick reminder that most people who are watching this video are not subscribed to my channel. If you enjoy this kind of content, hit that subscribe button so the algorithm gods know that you like what you're seeing and you want to see more. Volley of Souls is best used at the maximum soul count, whether that's 3 or 5. You never really want to use it outside of that maximum amount. In this current situation, because I'm using an augmented skull lantern, the maximum amount of souls I can carry is 3, so if I've got 3 souls, I'm good to eat them. If I was using a Soulbound Lantern instead and the maximum amount of souls I could carry was 5, the best time to use Volley of Souls would be at 5. You can view my Necrosis stacks on my buff bar on the bottom right hand side of the screen, or alternatively, you could turn your attention to the Necromancy overlay where they are indicated by these diamonds. The best time to spend your Necrosis stacks on Finger of Death is any time you have 6 or more stacks. Any time you cast it, it will use 6 stacks, so right now I have 12, I'm going to use Finger of Death, now I'm on 6, and I'm going to use Finger of Death again, and that's going to put me on zero. It's worth noting that you can cast Finger of Death without the correct amount of necrosis stacks, but unfortunately, it's just going to cost you a ton of adrenaline. And adrenaline is extremely valuable when you're using necromancy, so you want to avoid this whenever possible. Next up, we're going to be looking at when to use the Death Guard Special Attack. If you're using Tier 95 First Necromancer gear, your Death Guard Special Attack is a great option to put inside of an Essence of Finality amulet, or alternatively, if you happen to be using the regular Death Guard, that works too. The Death Guard special is extremely powerful and stuns your target, but more importantly, it also uses up all of your Necrosis stacks, and you also want to be spending those Necrosis stacks on Finger of Death. And because of that, there are actually points where it would be less good to use the Death Guard special attack. A good example of a time that it would be bad to use it would be on 12 stacks, because although it will hit an absolute ton of damage, you could have also used those Necrosis stacks to cast Finger of Death without costing any Adrenaline, which is generally speaking a better option. The Death Guard special attack should be used anytime you specifically need a stun, or anytime that you have 4 or fewer Necrosis stacks. It's great at 0, it's great at 2, and it's great at 4. But beyond that, you're better off using Finger of Death and waiting till your stacks are a little bit lower. As you can see right now, I've got a total of 4 stacks, so let's cast our Death Guard special. Bloat is a really interesting ability, because it will hit your target for a full 20 seconds, and it costs 20% Adrenaline to cast. Because of how long it lasts, what you really want to do is be using it as close to 3 times a minute as possible. Giving bloat close to 100% uptime will give you a lot of sustained, consistent damage output, which is a very big positive. But because it's an ability that doesn't have a cooldown, you can also accidentally cast it far more often than you need to. 
If you turn your attention to my necromancy job gauge on the bottom left part of my screen, you'll notice that there's actually a bar in the middle. And this bar, you'll see, is actually counting down the elapsed time of bloat. And that way, when I'm PVMing and I'm using this, I know that I'm never going to overcast bloat or cast it on top of itself. You'll see as soon as the bar runs out, that is when I would want to approach casting bloat a second time. If you can't access the Alt-1 toolkit for whatever reason, you can also monitor bloat without a timer by simply looking at your target's HP bar. You'll notice a little icon there that's the third icon from the left-hand side that shows bloat. You won't know how long is left on it, but whenever that icon disappears, you'll know that bloat should be recasted. It's also very important to note that in group encounters, only one person on your team can cast bloat at one time. This could be fixed in the future, but as of right now, because it's classed as a bleed, if multiple people cast bloat at the same time, it will choose one of them to count and the other one will not. Now let's talk about how you want to go about using basic abilities, because necromancy offers three. The first basic is the regular necromancy basic attack. For a lot of players, this is going to be toggled automatically, and anytime you don't fire an ability, you will be casting off a basic attack. If you don't like it casting automatically, you could also toggle this off in settings, and at that point, you'll have to fire it manually. The two other basics are Touch of Death and Soul Sap, and both should be used under most circumstances as often as possible. These two basic abilities are the building blocks of your rotation, as they provide you the stacks that you then have the opportunity to spend later on in the fight. Touch of Death will give you Necrosis stacks that can be spent on both Finger of Death and the Death Guard Special Attack, and Soul Sap will give you souls that you can spend on Soul Strike as well as Volley of Souls. If you prefer a slightly more laid back approach and you want to use Revolution, a really good option for your basic abilities and your stack management is to simply set a three tile Revolution bar in your settings and then throw your three basic abilities on it in the order of Touch of Death, Soul Sap, and then your regular basic necromancy attack. In doing this, you'll have a very laid back way to consistently be building your stacks, and then all you have to do is monitor when you have them so that you can manually override when you have stacks and spend them when it's appropriate. This is a really good starting point if you're newer to the combat system in RuneScape, and it will allow you to do an absolute ton of damage despite the very low actions per minute required. Now that we've covered some of the fundamental necromancy abilities, it's time to talk about your conjures. There are three necromancy conjurers, and all of them do very different things. The first conjure we're going to talk about is the Skeleton Warrior. He will attack regularly, but he will also build a rage stack every time he attacks your target. Because of this, you want to keep him alive as long as possible so that he will be on more rage stacks for a greater length of time. If at any point you want him to start attacking faster, you can then use the same ability that you used to summon him to command the Skeleton Warrior. Commanding the Skeleton Warrior won't cost you any adrenaline, but he will begin to deal significantly more damage and attack quite a bit faster. He also builds Rage Stacks a whole lot faster in this state, so it's a really good way to get your Skeleton dealing a lot more damage. Your Skeleton should be conjured 100% of the time that you are bossing with Necromancy, and Command Skeleton can be used anytime you'd like as often as possible. The second conjure we're going to talk about is the Vengeful Ghost. The Vengeful Ghost is an extremely powerful one. Although he doesn't look like much, he provides you a ton of heals consistently as you heal for a proportion of the damage he deals every single time he attacks. But we're just getting started with the Ghost. If you elect to command the Vengeful Ghost, your target will be applied with a debuff called Haunt. And this debuff is extremely powerful. The Haunted debuff will make your target take up to 10% bonus damage from all attacks and sources. And this is extremely powerful. The way to use this is extremely simple. You you always want to have a ghost conjured and you always want it to be commanded. The third and final conjure we're going to be talking about is the putrid zombie. The putrid zombie deals necromancy spirit damage every 3.6 seconds and also emits a stench that poisons all enemies within one game tile every 1.8 seconds. Although the zombie doesn't deal a ton of damage by himself, especially on poisonable targets, he's very helpful to have and he's always worth having out. The command zombie does something a little bit different than the previous two conjures we've gone over. If you hit the Command Putrid Zombie, you're going to notice that he's about to explode. And when he does, he'll deal a ton of damage in an area of effect around his current location. After exploding, of course, you will no longer have a zombie and you'll have to conjure up a new one. There's one last ability with regard to conjures that is extremely helpful, and it's called Conjure Undead Army. The Conjure Undead Army can be right-clicked on in your Necromancy ability book so that you can choose exactly which conjures you want to activate at which time. But because they're all a positive damage and it doesn't cost any adrenaline to conjure any of them, it's almost always worth using all of them. Once it's set up, all you have to do is hit the Conjure Undead Army keybind or button, and immediately you'll get your entire army of three conjures all around you, and they'll begin to attack. There's one very important incantation with regard to your conjures, and that incantation is Life Transfer. 
Life transfers sacrifice a part of your life points to extend the amount of time that your conjures are alive for, and it is extremely worth using. If you're in a boss encounter that you're not very used to, it might be a little spooky to use and it will take some practice. And if you don't want to use it and let your conjures time out, that is completely okay. But especially at the beginning of a fight, it is extremely beneficial to begin any boss fight you're going into by conjuring your undead army, immediately casting life transfer to extend all of those conjures, and then following it up by commanding your ghost. Once you've done those three things, your conjure should be completely and properly set up to start your boss fight. Just with those few very basic pointers, we're already set up and in a good position to deal an absolute ton of damage. We now know how to gain our stacks and also the best way to spend them. So let's practice that right now. Just like we previously talked about, we're gonna begin the fight by conjuring up an undead army, using life transfer, and then commanding our vengeful ghost. Once that's done, we're gonna make sure our stat boosting potions and prayers are on. I'm gonna throw a vulnerability bomb and it's time to start attacking. First thing I'm gonna do is apply bloat because we want bloat active a whole bunch of the time. I'm also gonna be using my command skeleton pretty much as often as possible. And outside of that, all I'm doing here is looking at my job gauge and making sure that whenever I have enough stacks to use finger of death, I'm using it. And whenever I have souls for volley of souls, I'm using that as well. Bloat just ran out, so I'm gonna reapply it there. And I think now might be a good time to use my death guard special because I don't have a ton of necrosis stacks. I'm gonna recommand the skeleton. Bloat's about to run out there, so I just used it. I'm gonna continue using volley of souls. I'm gonna reapply my bloat. And just with what we're currently doing right now, which is extremely basic, we're not using any ultimate abilities. All we're doing is spending our stacks as we have them and reapplying bloat. I'm actually doing close to 300,000 damage per minute. So if you can do this, you're already off to a fantastic start. But what if you want to take things a little bit further and you want to start crafting out a full-blown rotation? Now that we've been over all of the basics, there are two extremely powerful necromancy ultimate abilities that we haven't talked about yet. So let's start with Death Skulls. Death Skulls will launch a flurry of skulls at your target that will deal an absolute ton of necromancy damage per hit. This will cost 100% adrenaline and bounce up to four times. But as soon as you put on the Necromancy tier Zuck Cape, all of a sudden, Death Skulls will then cost 60% adrenaline instead of 100%, and it will also bounce up to six times instead of the usual four. Because of the reduced adrenaline cost and increase in number of hits, Death Skulls goes from an ability that is not extremely worth using to the foundational backbone of your DPS rotation. As soon as you've got your Zuck Cape, Death Skulls is gonna be a mainstay, and I'm gonna tell you how to use it in just a second. The second and final necromancy ultimate ability is called Living Death. When casting Living Death, you are gonna turn into a skeleton for 30 seconds. While you're transformed, a bunch of your foundational abilities are going to change. I'm gonna go through all the changes right now. The first change is that your basic attack will begin to generate two necrosis stacks every time you use it. What this means is that within Living Death, it is better to use the basic attack and give yourself some necrosis stacks than it is to use Soul Sap. The second change is that Touch of Death will generate an additional 6% adrenaline. Touch of Death's priority doesn't change at all here because it is still going to be the backbone of your rotation and the best basic ability to use. It's just even better. The third ability that's changed is Finger of Death. It will now deal 1.5x damage. And all this means is that Finger of Death that was already very good is just going to hit like an absolute bus. It was very worth using before and it's still extremely worth using. The fourth ability that's impacted is Death Skulls. And for Death Skulls, what it's gonna do is it's gonna reduce the cooldown to 12 seconds from an initial 60. What this means is that during Living Death, you're gonna be able to cast Death Skulls a whole lot more. The fifth and final change is that as soon as you cast it, the cooldowns on Touch of Death and Death Skulls will be reset. Even though five things were changed, the way that you use this is extremely simple. I'm gonna take you through an entire sample living death rotation, and I'm gonna explain all of the goals, all of the objectives, and all of the thinking. This is a good example of what your living death rotation could look like. I've slowed it down by one third, just so it's a little easier to talk over the abilities I'm using and the thinking that I'm going through as I make decisions on which abilities to use. For starters, we're gonna do all of our pre-fight stuff. So we're gonna do our conjures, life transfer, command the ghost, I'm gonna throw a vulnerability bomb, and I'm also gonna make sure that my pocket slot is activated, I'm pot it up and I've also got my stat boosting prayer on. And from there, it's time to deal some damage. One of the things that Living Death does is it actually resets the cooldown of Death Skulls. And because of that, the best way to start any kind of boss fight is actually to use Death Skulls right away. As soon as I use Death Skulls, you'll notice my adrenaline drops by only 30% instead of the usual 60. This is because the Ring of Vigor saves me 10%, my Conservation of Energy Relic saves me 10%, and then my Supreme Invigorate Aura also saves me an additional 10%. Now that I'm 100% Adrenaline, I'm going to use Living Death, and I'm also going to click on my Adrenaline Potion at the exact same time. 
The timing on this is slightly important, and as you see, as soon as I click on Living Death, I've actually reset the cooldown on my Death Skulls. It did have a one minute cooldown prior to this, and now that cooldown is completely gone. The primary objective in our Living Death rotation is to get three sets of Death Skulls out, and to do that, our first Death Skulls needs to go out pretty much right away. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna Living Death, we're gonna Adrenaline Potion, and then my very first ability has to be Touch of Death. As soon as I've used Touch of Death, you'll see here that I now have enough Adrenaline to make my second ability Death Skulls, and just like that, we've got our first Death Skulls off bright and early. From this point forward, it's an extremely simple rotation. The backbone of it is this. I'm going to be using Touch of Death whenever I can, and I'm going to be using my Auto Attack whenever I can't. Whenever I have enough Necrosis stacks to use Finger of Death, I'm going to be using Finger of Death. Something that's really important to note here is in order to get your three Death Skulls off, you need to be very mindful of your Adrenaline. For example, you'll notice that I don't have Bloat active on the boss, but if I were to use Bloat earlier on, I wouldn't have gotten my skulls off on time. As of right now though, I do feel comfortable with the adrenaline I have and the cooldown on Death Skulls, so I'm gonna use Bloat right there. At this point, because I'm over the 60% adrenaline needed for my second Death Skulls, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna elect to use the Split Soul Incantation. This doesn't generate or lose any adrenaline, but it is gonna convert my Soul Split healing into damage, and it is extremely worthwhile to use. I'm using it here because I know that I already have enough adrenaline to use Death Skulls as soon as it's available. And right after my Split Soul, there is my second Death Skulls. After this Death Skulls, you're going to notice that I have an absolute ton of Necrosis stacks. So after commanding the Skeleton, I'm now going to start spending those Necrosis stacks. That's one, and that's two Fingers of Death, just like that, with an auto attack in between them. And outside of that, I'm just going to keep auto attacking over and over and over again until I'm at my last Death Skulls. You're gonna notice that my third and final Death Skulls is available and there is three seconds left in my Living Death. So there's a little bit of leeway here, but the timing is pretty tight, especially if you don't have the Supreme Invigorate Aura, which is why I recommend it. It just makes the adrenaline management a lot easier. And just like that, we've got a perfect Living Death rotation where we managed to get off three separate Death Skulls. Finishing off our Living Death rotation, now we're gonna go back to building our stacks, commanding our skeleton, and I'm also gonna redo Life Transfer because I wanna keep my Conjures alive for as long as I possibly can. One thing you're gonna notice here is because we're casting our third Death Skulls within Living Death, its cooldown isn't gonna be 60 seconds, it's only gonna be 12. And because of that, in just a few seconds, we're gonna be able to cast Death Skulls again. This works out extremely well because we started with Death Skulls, we did three inside of our Living Death, and now, less than a minute later, we're actually going to be casting our fifth Death Skulls. And you're starting to see how the damage can really add up here. Practice absolutely makes perfect here, and it is super reasonable that this could take a couple attempts to get managing the stacks down. But in that singular minute, according to Rune Metrics, we just did 771,000 damage. But what about after your Living Death rotation, when everything's on cooldown? Well, at that point, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to focus on building up your soul stacks and using Volley of Souls whenever you're at the maximum amount. In addition to this, this is a good time to be applying Bloat as often as you can. You want to continue with that 100% uptime goal, and now is a point where your adrenaline is a little bit less important. You want to be commanding your skeleton, and outside of commanding your skeleton, it's also a really good opportunity to be using your Death Guard and Omni Guard special attacks. They're really best suited as filler abilities when your living death is on cooldown. But after just a bit of filler abilities, and of course our fifth Death Skulls, you're going to notice here that our living death is actually almost back off cooldown, which is going to set us up to do the same thing all over again. For a lot of boss fights, you will have already killed your target by this point, but if you haven't, you have two options here. You can either use Living Death again without your Adrenaline Potion, meaning you won't be able to get three Death Skulls, or alternatively, what you could do in this exact same instance is you could wait the 29 seconds for Death Skulls to be available, you could recast Death Skulls, and then go into your Living Death rotation with your Adrenaline Potion available again. Both options are great, and it totally depends on what kind of boss fight you're doing, but either way, this is a good example rotation of how to deal damage with Necromancy. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope it helped you guys deal a little bit more damage with Necromancy. If you have any other suggestions for videos that you'd like me to make, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And outside of that, I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.